Simulation in all of medicine now is kind of quite an integral part of training. You can't train for an entire kind of spectrum of the things you're expected to see. I mean, I'm an anaesthetist and we have things that happen commonly, but there's things that happen rarely. And we need to practice those to make sure that when they do happen, we're quite slick. Um, I think in the pre-hospital environment, you've got many more of these kind of less common things happening, um, less common instances happening. Um, and also we're in a quite a high pressure environment. So even if it's a reasonably straightforward um, procedure or patient, um, that can all be made more complex by being in a complex environment that you've got no control over. Can you tell me what's going on, please? Yeah, just bear with me. This young man's going to go and sit and touch and keep you comfortable. And then as soon as we've got on top of But you're not telling me what's happening today. I'm a little bit busy, guys. OK, I'm really sorry. I'll wait and talk to you in just a minute, OK? But at the moment, I'm going to have to ignore you because I need to treat you more, OK? I need to get on top of you. Practicing the things we do have control over, like procedures such as a rapid sequence induction anaesthesia, um, so that it's kind of it's muscle memory. It's kind of we're not thinking about it. It's almost automatic. Um, means that then when we get onto an actual job uh, and it's complex, that that part of it's a little bit more automatic. So we're not having to think about it so much, um, and that allows us then to kind of free up that bit of our brain to kind of deal with the other complexities of the situation. We've got doctors coming from all over the UK now, coming to work for our service, who may have worked for other services. Um, and to a point, you know, treating a critically ill patient is the same wherever you work. Um, but the way we run things may be slightly different to another service, and certainly our geography and our hospitals are different to other, other areas. Um, so part of the training weekend was to get the newer doctors using our standard operating procedures and using our equipment, because they may be used to another system, um, and just get them used to our way of doing things and checking that they'd learn our SOPs and weapon ways of doing things. The weekend, it was a long weekend, uh, three days, and I, I guess the multifaceted nature of it kind of was a reflection of the multifaceted nature of our service. So for the first day we spent doing neonatal training with the chance team came up, because obviously a proportion of what we do is looking after neonates that get delivered at home or in M M midwife-led units that need enhanced care. Um, so we spent the first day of it doing that. Um, something that we're not hugely familiar with, although we've had some very good training from Chance. And again, it's, it's a refresher for the older guys and it's a kind of a kind of throwing at the deep end for the newer guys, just to get them used to kind of sick babies, because that's some of what we do. Day two then was a, a very, very long, long day of lots of pre-hospital scenarios. So an early start and a late finish. Um, and no lunch breaks, no meal breaks, just kind of eating on the hoof and going from job to job to job. Um, and that was, I think we did nine scenarios that were all pre-hospital based, so you know, all car accidents and medical emergencies at home. Um, and they were right through from, you know, babies right through to elderly people, having a host of kind of traumatic or medical insults. Um, and actually, because I, I did this last year, we did a two-week accelerated training programme for all the new people that started, so I kind of wrote them from scratch and we had about 50 different scenarios then. Obviously only a, only a weekend this time, so on this day we just did uh, nine scenarios. But what I did is I made them much more difficult because I expected my newer guys, you know, last year we were a brand new service and we were all kind of coming together with all our new kit and all of our new SOPs. This year we're an established service with all the kit established, all the SOPs established, so it's more to integrate our new guys into it. So it meant I could ramp the difficulty up, so I made them quite a lot more complex in terms of scenarios. Um, and, and what I actually did is rather than just making them up like I did last time, you know, um, we looked at all of the really interesting jobs we've had over the last 18 months. So all of the jobs that they did over this weekend were real life jobs that the service has actually done that I kind of recreated into a scenario. So they kind of, it's interesting to actually get them to do jobs that have been done by the service already. And then the final day um, was looking at the retrieval transfer element of our job. Um, so going into minor injuries units, going into other hospitals, picking sick patients up and doing a bit of retrieval transfer. Um, so then they, they did a whole bunch of scenarios related around that. And again, I tried to use real real jobs that we've done in the last kind of 18 months just to make it a bit more realistic and just to try to put them into some of the challenging situations that we've faced in the last 18 months and see how they did. Okay, oh, that's great to land, <laughs> Okay, guys, so we're just about set up for an RSI. We've got a kit done. Shall we go through the checklist? Obviously, we do not exist. We're not an island. Uh, we do not exist by ourselves. So every job that we go to, there will almost always be a WAST asset on the scene. And I say, you know, EMRTS is 
it's not it's a service in its own right but it doesn't act by itself so we are just in a kind of an add-on to the, the service that WAST provide so having WAST uh, um, at, the, at this training weekend and having them be part of the scenarios is completely integral because it, it wouldn't be realistic if you know we were tipping up on the scene by ourselves to do the whole scene by ourselves it's very very rare we turn up at a scene by ourselves normally WAST are there so having them there was very very important um, we also had some of the search and rescue paramedics came along so we're increasingly doing more and more work with the search and rescue paramedics um, Partly because they just, you know, they're, they're new like we are. They're, their service is new, and we're just learning a little bit more about what each other do. And, and certainly, you know, there's there's lots of jobs that they go to where potentially we can add benefit, uh, and lots of jobs that we want to go to. Often, you know, the weather gets bad that they can a enable us to get to. Um, so it's a little bit help helping them build on their medical expertise, but also, you know, getting them involved and getting them to understand what our service brings. We had a load of guys up from Cornwall Air Ambulance actually. So Cornwall Air Ambulance are a little way behind us in terms of doctors on the aircraft. So they have a paramedic model still, but they're just starting to get some doctors on board. So I think they just a couple of their doctors just came up um, just as a kind of training thing for them really, just for them to get a flavour of, of what, what a kind of high performing doctor led service is like. Um, so they just came up as a bit of training for themselves really and it's, it's nice to do a bit of mutual mutual aid training like that hopefully they'll return the favour and we can go on holiday down to Nuki for a week or something in the future but that was just a kind of a favour to them really to let them do a bit of kind of high performance training